20 years ago, elevated cholesterol levels were only seen in adults over the age of 40. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. We're seeing more and more cases of elevated cholesterol levels now starting with people in their early 20s. Many scientific studies have revealed that statin use, including even low dose statins, has been linked with cognitive effects like dementia and memory loss, nerve damage, liver damage, cardiac injury, muscle injury, and increased risk of developing diabetes. A staggering 94 million Americans aged 20 and up are grappling with high cholesterol. And in response, the number of statin prescriptions has more than doubled since 2002. But here's the kicker. While these drugs promise to lower cholesterol, science has unveiled a very dark side. Statins are linked to severe side effects like increased risk of dementia and Alzheimer's, peripheral nerve damage, erectile dysfunction, liver cancer, heart failure, and diabetes. Up until now, we've relied on these risky drugs because frankly, we didn't think we had a choice, but that's about to change. In today's video, I'll uncover several safer and effective alternatives that have been proven by science to lower cholesterol without dangerous side effects. This is a critical step in taking control of your nerve health and really your health in general. You don't want to miss this. Coming up. years ago, elevated cholesterol levels were only seen in adults over the age of 40, with the highest incidence in people in their 60s and older. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. We're seeing more and more cases of elevated cholesterol levels now starting with people in their early 20s. The biggest reason we're seeing a much younger population get this condition is due to the change in diets to ultra high processed foods and beverages, ranging from energy drinks to processed meats, vegan meats, yep, you heard it correctly, vegan meats, instant meals, fast foods, and more. Then couple that with the fact that a sedentary lifestyle is increasingly common amongst kids, teens, and young adults who are glued to electronic devices. Let me give you an example. Dr. C and I are blessed to live in a neighborhood where everyone has a large front and backyard. Yet twice a day when we walk our dog Brandy, we rarely see a single child playing outside. Unfortunately, that's become the norm across the U.S. Now, if you're watching this from a different country, I want to hear from you. Are you seeing the same tr uh, trend with children in other countries too? Let me know. Now, if you haven't watched our first video on statins, you'll definitely want to catch that video because it covers all of the objective findings and the research of statin medications. And what the science has revealed is really alarming and not well known by doctors and especially not by patients. Anyone on a statin or considering taking a statin should watch this video. I'll leave a link below for you so you can watch it after you finish this video. Many scientific studies have revealed that statin use, including even low dose statins, has been linked with cognitive effects like dementia and memory loss, nerve damage, liver damage, cardiac injury, muscle injury, and increased risk of developing diabetes. So based on all of the proven side effects that statins cause, more and more people are looking for safer alternatives to these drugs. Today, we'll examine scientifically proven alternatives to lowering cholesterol. And as always, we'll, pro we'll provide you with the links to the studies below. Let's start with the obvious and the least expensive approach, exercise. I won't do a deep dive on exercise in this video, but it's important for you to have a basic understanding of how exercise improves cholesterol levels. So when I talk about exercise, I'm talking about aerobic exercises like walking or jogging, cycling or swimming. And I'm also talking about resistance training. And for resistance training, it doesn't matter if you lift weights, use your own body weight, or use resistant bands. Any of these exercises will improve cholesterol levels. And here's how it happens. Exercising boosts certain enzymes that increase HDL cholesterol and enhance its function. This is your good, healthy cholesterol. Regular exercise also lowers LDL cholesterol, more specifically the harmful branch of LDL known as SDLDL. And since your muscles use triglycerides as a source of energy during exercise, the triglycerides in your bloodstream will automatically decrease. 
exercising also improves insulin sensitivity. When your cells are resistant to insulin, this shows up on your lab work with a hemoglobin A1C level of 5.7 or higher. Then at this point, your body is more prone to producing higher amounts of SDLDL, the dangerous cholesterol. If you want a much better understanding of how HDL or LDL works in the body, make sure you watch my video on this. And that's the first video on statins. The next approach to lowering cholesterol is change your diet. Gang, I know many of you don't want to hear this, and I get it. Foods are addicting. Heck, the food industry makes them addictive. The absolute worst foods for us fuel the pleasure centers in our brains, making it difficult to give them up. But here's what I can tell you for a fact. If you don't start making changes in your diet now, in several years or less, you'll be battling any variety of chronic illnesses. Just start with small baby steps to make changes. Small changes are certainly better than no changes at all. So here are some simple things you can do for your diet. Add soluble fiber. Whole foods rich in soluble fibers include oats, barley, beans, and lentils. Fruits like berries, kiwis, bananas, and other fruits are rich sources of soluble fibers, as are many vegetables. Eating more soluble fiber is a powerful way to lower your LDL cholesterol. Next, increase omega-3 fatty acids. Fish oils or omega-3 fatty acids are essential for heart and nervous system health. But statins can prevent omega-3s from getting into cells and cell membranes. So it's imperative to supplement your diet with a lot more omega-3s. Eat more fatty fish like salmon, add flax seeds and chia seeds to your daily diet. The American Heart Association recommends taking between 2,000 milligrams to 4,000 milligrams of combined EPA DHA fish oil daily. Research has shown that this amount will lower triglycerides and reduce SDLDLs. You should also increase monounsaturated fatty acids. Boosting these fatty acids in your diet, like extra virgin olive oil, avocados, nuts, and seeds, is an excellent way to decrease SDLDLs while elevating your heart-healthy HDL levels. In fact, a study published in the journal Lipids in Health and Disease found that consuming two tablespoons or 30 mLs of extra virgin olive oil daily increase HDL cholesterol and reduced LDL cholesterol. Additionally, research published in the New England Journal of Medicine focusing on the Mediterranean diet showed that participants who consumed around four tablespoons or 60 mLs of extra virgin olive oil daily had better cardiovascular outcomes, including improved cholesterol profiles and lower incidence of cardiovascular disease. Next, we'll look at a few supplements proven in clinical studies to be very effective at reducing SDLDL cholesterol and triglycerides. Let's start with one of my favorite cholesterol-lowering supplements, and that's red yeast rice. Research studies have shown that red yeast rice is equally as effective as a low-dose statin drug with lowering cholesterol. And much like statins, red yeast rice can lower SDLDL cholesterol by 20 to 30 percent and triglycerides by 15 to 25 percent. And it's also been shown to reduce the risk of heart attacks or strokes. The dosages used in studies ranged from 1200 milligrams to 2400 milligrams daily. I do want you to be aware that this supplement can cause side effects like muscle pain, but according to studies that can easily be mitigated by taking 100 to 200 milligrams of CoQ10 in conjunction with the red yeast rice. When we use red yeast rice for our patients, we start them on just 300 milligrams taken twice daily for two weeks to make sure they don't develop any muscle pain. Then we'll increase them to 600 milligrams taken twice daily. Don't we blossom? This is my little assistant. Now, before everyone rushes out to buy the supplement, there's something you need to know. Many of the red yeast rice supplements on the market are complete crap. So here's what you need to know to get a good quality red yeast rice supplement that will work. 
make sure the supplement company is using a full spectrum red yeast rice extract. This means the extract will contain 13 active compounds along with plant sterols, polyphenols, isoflavones, and other phytonutrients. This is the key for it to lower cholesterol. Unfortunately, many manufacturers will isolate one active ingredient and use that in their formula. This allows them to save money and increase their profit margin. The problem is without all 13 active compounds, it's not effective. Two brands that I've checked out and have been happy with are Durable Red Yeast Rice and Thorn Coliase 900. Also by Thorn is Red Yeast Rice plus CoQ10, but there isn't enough CoQ10 in this one supplement to meet your needs, so you'll still need to take an additional CoQ10 supplement. And as always, I'm not getting paid by any supplement company. I only recommend supplements I have direct experience with using or I've been able, able to test. Now, here are two cautions you need to be aware of when using Red Yeast Rice. It should never be taken in conjunction with a statin. And if you're on a blood thinner, make sure your doctor monitors your PT INR levels on your labs. These tests measure how quickly your blood can clot. And just like a statin, red yeast rice can reduce clotting time. Now, let's look at the next supplement shown to lower cholesterol, and that's berberine. Berberine has a few unique actions. It can turn on a switch that tells your liver to make less cholesterol. It can increase the number of cleanup crews to remove SDLDL cholesterol from your bloodstream. Berberine can also improve your microbiota to help you manage excess cholesterol and bad cholesterol coming in through your diet. Studies have shown that 500 milligrams of berberine taking, taken three times per day for several months results in significant improvement in your cholesterol levels. The studies reported that most people began to see lowered cholesterol levels by eight weeks. There are a couple of different brands of berberine that I like and they're both equally good. I like berberine by Thorne and berberine and micro PQQ by Mercola Market. These are both great brands. The third supplement proven to be effective in lowering cholesterol is amla. Amla, also known as Indian gooseberry, is a native tree of India and Southeast Asia. Research has proven that it effectively lowers triglycerides, total cholesterol, and LDL levels, and more specifically SDLDL, while increasing HDL levels, that's your good cholesterol. A typical dose used in studies range from 500 milligrams up to 1,000 milligrams daily. We always recommend starting with a low dose of 250 milligrams twice daily for two weeks before increasing to 500 milligrams twice a day to ensure there isn't any stomach upset. Research reports the lipid lowering effects were evident within two months, but it took up to six months to see substantial reductions in cholesterol. The brand of AMLA that I like is True Veda Organic AMLA. Now, those are my top three go-tos for lowering SDLDL cholesterol based on the science. But for those of you who are very knowledgeable, you're probably wondering why I didn't include niacin in this list. So let's talk about that for a minute. Niacin, also known as vitamin B3, has been shown in research studies that when administered in doses of 500 milligrams to 2,000 milligrams, especially at the higher end of those doses, it significantly improves the cholesterol profile and it can raise HDL, your good cholesterol, by more than 30%, and that's huge. Now, why aren't I singing its praises? Well, there's only one reason. As effective as niacin is, it's been known to cause a flushing phenomenon where your skin, especially your face, turns hot and red, and there can even be itching and tingling in the affected area as well. This isn't just limited to the face, it can happen anywhere in the body. More than 50% of people experience this side effect when they're taking higher doses of niacin. It's not dangerous, but it can be very uncomfortable. And that's the only reason niacin didn't make it on this list. So you might be thinking, what about no flush niacin? Well, although it's a great source of B3, it doesn't work to reduce cholesterol. If you've taken regular niacin without any flushing problems in the, in the past, it's a great supplement to use to achieve healthy cholesterol levels.
And there you have it, health warriors. With greater numbers of Americans battling dangerous cholesterol levels, we've seen statin prescriptions skyrocket. This is no longer an old person's disease. Hypercholesterolemia is now affecting young adults in their 20s. And as science has revealed, statin medications come with a very long list of serious side effects. Um, and the risk range from developing Alzheimer's disease to peripheral neuropathy and even liver cancer and heart failure. The good news, you have options. You have the power to choose safer, effective alternatives that don't just lower cholesterol, but also allow you to take control of your health. Don't settle for risky shortcuts when you can achieve lasting health through natural means. Be the hero of your own health story. Make informed choices, stay proactive, and how about we redefine what it means to live well. If this resonates with you, please hit that like button, share this video with your circle, and subscribe for more insights on living your healthiest life, always backed by the latest research. Oh, and don't forget to click on the bell to get notified of our latest video releases. Remember, every small step you take towards a healthier lifestyle is a giant leap towards a better future. I look forward to seeing you on the road to great nerve health. Blessings. The absolute worst foods. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. The absolute worst. God, I can't get this word out of my mouth. Foods. <laughs> Who would have thought that would be a complicated word?